Hi, and welcome to the show podium. This session is 032. And if you'd like to look at more information about the work I do, you can contact me on denise.holland at class-performance.com or you can look at my website on www.class-performance.com or you can also go over to a new global initiative that I'm part of now as the mentor team and that can be found at www.webofwellbeing.org. So in this show, if you're listening to it at the time it's being recorded, we are at the final evening of the IAAF World Athletics Championship held here in London. And I am really inspired to talk to you this week about the performances of the young athlete Dina Asher-Smith. So Dina has really caught my eye, actually, because she's a young athlete full of innocence and freshness and beautiful uh, joy and humility in the way in which she shows up to events. And she has really had quite an eventful time this year in terms of physical fitness. So she broke her foot in February and then needed to have pins put in her foot. And in actual fact, she didn't start running until about six weeks ago. And last night, we saw her in the final of the 200 metres. It was really quite extraordinary because I don't believe that she was expected to to actually reach the final. And here she is in the final of a, of a major world championship. I mean, I only really started to, to get into some form about six weeks ago. In fact, get back on her feet running um, six weeks ago. And I'd like to share with you some of the comments that she made immediately after the race. I was coming down the home straight thinking, oh, my God, I didn't know I was in this sort of shape. But then to see I missed out on bronze by seven hundredths of a second is gutting. In sprinting terms, that's quite a lot, but not when you've broken your foot. I'm quite frustrated, but on reflection, I'm pleased to have run a 22.20 on a very little training. And then she went on to say something else which really struck me. It really struck a chord deep inside my soul because so often We have targets and expectations and shoulds and ought tos and wants and desires on our minds as athletes and coaches. And she just said something that was beautiful. She said, I didn't even have placings in my mind in the blocks. I know it sounds so silly, but I was honestly just so happy to be there. The crowds were getting louder and louder when I was coming down the home straight. And I thought, that probably means it's going quite well. So just keep going. It's my best finish ever in a world final, but so close. Asha came fourth in that 200 metre final and the Dutch woman Daphne Schnipers defended her title. The point I want to make in this show is, even if you have no understanding spiritual or intellectual, of the three principles that I talk about on this show of the mind, consciousness and thought, they're playing out anyway. And what I love about the principles is it's not a prescription, it's a description of how it is that life works. It's the best we have, it seems, of explaining the mechanism by which human beings come to have experiences as well as give some description to the formless nature and the energy of all things that we are a part of. In Dina's words, it just it just says everything. I mean, she didn't have any placings in mind and she just showed up. And that, for me, points to the purity and the clarity that we have as our original state before any conceptual ideas that we learn that we have as part of our conditioning. And I love that she was surprised by how it was going. 
And then, of course, to just miss out on a fraction of a second. And then all of those emotions going up and down. I mean, it was fabulous. You just saw all of that energy coming and going, ebbing and flowing in her. And it just seemed to me that if she had have had ideas and beliefs and expectations and of where it was that she wanted to finish in that competition, we would perhaps not seen the sort of performance that we saw from her. I mean, so often we see the pain and the anguish on athletes' faces. And you can see their bodies tighten up. And it might look like concentration. And so I just want to talk about that a little bit because what is concentration? What is focus? It's one of those areas where coaches and psychologists spend an awful lot of time in mental preparation, trying to get the, the mind into a particular state so that you can supposedly be on your game when it counts. Now, until about four and a half years ago, when I um, left my role as national coach for Scotland Netball, I would have considered that to be a good strategy. But now I see, and I could see the freshness and the innocence in in Dina running, and it really reminded me of why on earth do we need to have to control what's going on in our mind? As I see it, the more we try to control what's going on in our mind, so to develop some sort of technique so that we only think about the things that are pertinent to the environment that we're in at the time, then that's just like trying to control something that is not controllable. It's like trying to control the weather. I have no idea what thoughts are going to pop in my head. And if I try not to think of a particular something, then that is just going to make it worse. I'm going to be annoyed that I can't get that out of my mind. If I see that that is a problem and I should, in terms of conditioning, have nothing on my mind, then I'm going to perhaps feel really uncomfortable when I have a lot of noise going on and that I'm unable to exercise an effective technique to keep focused and concentrate. Usain Bolt is is a, a fine example actually of this. He comes out and he's 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 relaxed and he's he's laughing and he's he's loving the crowd, he's loving the connection to everybody and you know he he one might say well is he focused? You know, he's not stern, he's, he's, he, 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 he doesn't have thinking eyes, he, you know, he, he's completely joyous. And for me, I see that that's actually a really healthy, natural state to show up in a competition. It seems to me that both Dina and Usain are both touching on and both connecting with the essence of their being and that they're just showing up in the moment and they're living, if you like, in the power of now. I mean, they're not actually getting hooked up and caught up and ruminating over thinking about the future and about expectations and about ideas about where they might want to finish and targets and consequences. They're just staying in the now and just letting that performance flow through them. And there's such power in that. So what is it that you need to understand that you need to get a glimpse of profoundly that allows you to just stay in the now, to not be hijacked and sabotaged by your personal thinking. 
all of the ideas about who and what you are as a person and all of the expectations and desires and wants and needs that go with that. But to stay in the space underneath all of that transient thinking about you and your identity and what this means to you, the person. Because that's changing all the time. That is very, very transient. And underneath that, there is this constant energy which is fueling our performances, which in this work we call the universal power of mind. And it's not a technique The transformation that I've seen in my clients and in many people throughout the world who are looking in this direction comes from insight. It's a spiritual understanding. It's an understanding from within. And it's you need an aha moment and you change the lens through which you see the world. Because you're not actually seeing what's out there. You're creating it from inside out. I hope you've enjoyed the show and, of course, the World Championship of the Athletics. And just to conclude, now that we've seen the relay finals and the GB team had absolutely no idea of what was to come and from nowhere, from that space out of which every experience and form comes from, they produced a gold medal winning performance in the 4x100 relay. It was phenomenal to see and very sad to see, of course, Usain Bolt pull up in that uh, his last competition. But what he's brought to sport over the years is an unbelievable purity and freshness of character. He is just himself. He isn't trying to be something else or prove himself. He is just naturally, it seems, showing up and just exploring what can be done through his physical body as an elite athlete. So that just leaves me to say thank you so much for listening and I look forward to sharing with you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.